Welcome to the Nature Here TV show. Today we're going to be talking about wildlife photography and today we have with us Gary Davenport and I'm super excited about this one. I think this is going to be a great show. Um, Gary, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've lived in Portland my whole life and I am retired and I love bird photography. Perfect. Um, so a little bit about how you became into nature photography. Was it something as a child or give us a little, some information about that? Uh, no, actually it wasn't until uh, I retired. Um, to my surprise, my brother started showing me some bird shots that he was taking. And it surprised me so much to see what neat shots they were that I decided to try it myself. And so I went and bought a point and shoot camera and was very disappointed. <laughs> Realized I was gonna have to do something different than that. So I uh, finally w invested in some camera gear, not this one. And uh, I started from there. So we can thank your brother? Yes. Okay, <laughs> just making sure. Um, what are some of your favorite wildlife subjects? Um, uh, definitely the raptors, um, and most especially the bald eagle. It's just such a majestic bird, and to see how it can manipulate the air to do different things in the air is just amazing to me. So Interesting to it's watch. It's def definitely my favorite. Okay. and. How much patience do you have? Because obviously animals are, are different for photography. That's a whole nother ballpark as far right. as taking pictures versus people. It takes a lot of patience. It also takes a lot of persistence. So I call those the two P's. And uh, besides that, it takes knowledge of the area and of the birds in that area. And it never hurts to have a little bit of luck. Oh, <laughs> of course not. No, it's the <laughs> longest time that you've ever had to like wait for something. If you were super excited and really wanted, you're like, I'm going to wait here all day. Yeah. Uh, generally speaking, since I take most of my pictures from a car and uh, at Ridgefield Wildlife Refuge, I usually don't wait too long. I mean, I've, I've waited an hour or so uh, a few times, but when you're in a car, it's a little bit different thing than if you're out trying to set up a blind in the woods or something, you know, like other photographers might be doing. So, um, it, I don't take too much time, generally speaking. Okay. Because you can like drive to a picture sometime when you're in your car. Right. You know, well, a car seems a little thing. more convenient, also. Yeah, I would think exactly. it's a little more comfortable, and you can there kind you of go. get yourself situated, and <laughs> so you can wait, not feel like it's such a long time. That's it. There you go. Okay. And you've got some photos that you're going to be showing us. Ah, uh, yes, I do. Um, this first one we've been watching, I think. Put a photo up. Okay, so this is a bald eagle that um, I watched fly toward me for like 200 yards and he just kept coming right at me and flew right over my car and gave me this wonderful shot. This is a Harlan's Hawk, a rather rare shot at uh, Ridgefield and one of my favorite birds. I really had. Uh, was excited to get this shot. This is an American kestrel. It is the smallest raptor we have and also the smallest of the falcons. The stripes on those wings are beautiful. Yeah, he's, uh, he's hovering here in this picture. He's a hoverer. He just stands up. He just hovers about 50 feet off the ground and looks for something to go after. Uh, these are coyotes and these are the ears. One guy's hearing forward, one guy's hearing backward. These guys make wonderful subjects. They're making a, their team there. This is a bald eagle that had just fledged um, about two weeks prior to this shot. And I was so excited to see this. I got it within about 35 feet of him, but of course my cameras weren't ready. I grabbed one of them and I got, luckily got this shot through the windshield. And uh, I had only seen this guy before, 450 feet to his nest before, and then I saw this, and he's like three feet tall, that close. It's very exciting. He looks, he looks very large. <laughs> he's very large for just a young bird. <laughs> this was the first time I got a picture of a raccoon, baby raccoon, uh -huh. look, looking down at me from a tree. He's watching you. Yeah, he was very <laughs> curious. <laughs> now, this is a male northern harrier. And these guys, the males are rare out at Ridgefield. And uh, 
This guy made this picture by looking right at me. I, you couldn't have, that's like perfect. Yeah. His claws that. are like just, wow, <laughs> that's crazy. It was very exciting. That's a great photo. Thank you. And, and now oh, this, wow. this shot here was, uh, I'll admit this was a lucky shot. But <laughs> this is one of the ones I, you're talking about lucky. I was, um, I mean, they're all lucky in a way, but I was sitting there watching this bald eagle on that mound. He was just sitting there doing nothing. And then all of a sudden I started to see some action out there. I didn't know what, I got my camera focused on the action as soon as I could. And I just started shooting pictures. When I got home, the first in focus shot was this one. And oh, I was amazed. Incredible. This, this red tailed hawk had attacked this uh, bald eagle and the uh, eagle went into this defensive position right away. He's a little guy to be attacking such a big yeah, bird, so he's, he that's pretty gutsy right there. <laughs> it was. And, okay, now this shot is a female harrier, so quite a bit different than the male one that we just saw. And uh, she's just had landed on this post, and you can see how it's just starting to fold its wings. This is a landscape shot of almost a sunset at Ridgefield National Wildlife Refuge. Now, th this picture is, um, all the previous pictures were taken at Ridgefield. These next five were not. This was taken at Malheur National Wildlife Refuge near Burns, Oregon. This is a redhead duck. This is a brown pelican taken at the port of Garibaldi near Tillamook. Uh, this is a picture of an eagle's nest with the adult, if you look carefully, is bringing all my small duck for the eaglets. There's a lot going on in that picture. That's yeah. crazy. Th this was taken up in Dungeness Bay in Northwest Washington. And this is an osprey um, taken in Washougal, Washington. Somebody told me where there was a nest there. I went and waited and this guy showed up with a fish that he's eating on top of that post. So that should do those it for this some, set. Those are great pictures. And all of those are local? Those are Within the Northwest, like yes. area, nothing outside oh, there, of that. Yes, exactly. Okay, and your recommendation for photography location, so if someone to go out and take some pictures, and probably most of them are gonna be beginners, so I mean, you gotta kinda yeah. think along that realm of so, easy. Okay, so, <clears throat> so I don't take pictures near Portland myself, just because I take pictures from a car, but um, around Portland, there's, um, I know of photographers who have gotten good shots in uh, these four locations. One is the Tualatin uh, National Wildlife Refuge. Um, in Portland, there's the Crystal Spring Gardens. Um, that's near uh, Reed College. There's the Commonwealth Lake Park is in Beaverton. And there's the Salish Ponds Park. Uh, near uh, in Fairview, Oregon. Okay. So th those are good places. And they're kind uh, of spread out a little bit. So if you're living on different sides of town, that kind of covers the whole Portland area. There you sort go. Of. And so, and but I even though I take most of my pictures at Ridgefield National Wildlife Refuge, um, which is a really good place, by the way. It's of of all the wildlife refuges, it's one of the best in the Northwest. But there's lots of different refuges around, and just look at their websites and learn something about them before you go to them. So, uh, but that's so do what a little I would, research. Okay. Yeah. Um, some good subjects to, you know, what's what birds to me would be hard because they're <laughs> near exactly. here or there all the time. Um, Unless you're see, lucky. The thing is, to me, any encounter I have with uh, wildlife of any kind and I come away with a good picture, that's a good subject. So, um, you know, some people who, who want a beginner who might want something easy to practice with, uh, you know, you can even go to a zoo or... Uh, something where they're a little more yeah, in now, a cage, something kind a of place easier where to get. A good place to practice is going to the beach and uh, practice on seagulls. You know, they let you get close to them. They're easy to shoot for when they're flying around and uh, that's a good practice bird. So, and... Um, another good thing is to practice in your backyard, backyard birds. Right, you know, you can set up a feeder, a feeder if you want to. Certainly. I just want to make one point, and that is 
photography of either baited birds, like in your backyard, or uh, captured birds, like at the zoo, that's a different type of photography than what I do. So all of my birds are wild, free, and uncaptured uh, subjects. So. Right, but for a beginner, if someone's sure. trying to kind of get started before learn they somewhere. actually step out and, and do something oh, you that bet. seems a little bit more It's okay to take those kind of pictures, but if you do, you should just let people know that this is a backyard bird right, or, you weren't or it was at the zoo. Sitting somewhere out yeah. where they're just out flying around. <laughs> um, the best time of day? Yeah, the best time of day, so again, um, I when I'm at the uh, refuge, um, I always try to expect the unexpected because things can happen any time of day. But um, if forced to say, I would say the best times are about two hours after sunrise and about two hours before sunset. Birds seem to be the most active. Okay. okay. And get them when they're moving around a little bit, not going to be so yeah. stationary. Okay, the biggest question, tell us a little bit about your camera because this camera is incredible. Uh, okay. So I've evolved from lesser type of equipment to this kind. So now we have, the camera is a Nikon D600. It's a full frame camera. And uh, I have found it incredible. Um, it has a really wonderful sensor. It was made by Sony. The sensor was made by Sony, by the way, not okay. Nikon. But of course, so, interchange. Uh, so, uh, and okay, so then the lens, which is really the most important thing for bird photography, this is a 400 millimeter f2.8 prime lens, which means that it's not a zoom lens. So uh, most good bird shooters do not use zoom lenses, although it's okay too, but it's just uh, hopefully a prime lens will be a slightly sharper than a zoom lens of the same length. And so in between the camera and the lens now, we have uh, what's called a teleconverter. This is a 1.4 times, and it turns my 400 millimeter lens into a 560 millimeter lens. Which is so, huge Which difference. is uh, just a bit longer, but I find it really good for general bird shooting. Okay. So then fourth piece of equipment, when you're shooting from a car. The most important. Is a bean bag. <laughs> so you can see that. Um, which to me seems silly at first when you, I know I first saw it, but it <laughs> makes so much sense. And this fits over the lower frame of your car window and uh, it supports the camera really well. Well, and the weight of the camera, because you have yeah. to tell people how much this camera weighs, because that's incredible in okay, itself. Yeah, so the, the, well, all together, it's about 12 pounds. The lens is 10 pounds, 14 inches long, and, and the whole thing is about 12 pounds. Um, now this, if you fill it with beans, it weighs 25 pounds. Oh. <laughs> So I recently, I did that at first and it was just That's really terrible. Yeah. No, I <laughs> I, I've recently changed to... Like the bean bag beans? Buckwheat hulls. Okay, so H -U, that's H-U-L-L-S. You can buy buckwheat hulls on, at Amazon for $12 for five pounds. This has got, this is now down to about five pounds. Which is definitely instead. a lot more yeah. practical. And, yeah, so... And you use that in place of a tripod, because I know a lot of people think, right. I think of photography, I think tripod, I don't think beanbag, but right. that makes sense, so. So, yeah, I, I do not like tripods for bird shooting. Some people do, it's just my opinion. I don't like anything that ties my lens down. Okay. I want to be able to grab it and move it to. Uh, right, and a tripod, obviously that's hard. Because I like, I always use, my priority is fly, birds in flight. So um, I don't want my lens tied down by a tripod or anything else. So if someone had just a basic DSLR camera, you know, they, and they could take it with just without all the fancy stuff that you have here. But I mean, you could get a decent picture with something like that and then kind of gradually move up. Because I know photography stuff is expensive. I mean, yes. it's, it can be, you can end up spending a, a good amount of money on it. So yeah. to start out, get a, a decent camera, would, I would think would be probably the most uh, important. Yeah, I would say a DSLR is almost... Uh, required um, okay. and and then and there are 400 millimeter lenses that you can buy that are, are a lot cheaper than this one and that's what I started with in uh, a lesser expensive one this I had to raid my IRA to get so. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless 
You yeah. have it. You I have, have it, great and uh, you're I'm having fun in my retirement. And you love it, and I think that's what's important. I think when you find something like that, that that's that's a great thing. Yeah. So, but I have to definitely point out again, the beanbag thing I think is a fabulous idea for people that are, because the tripod is stationary, if you, you can't move it around, I, I don't, like it took me a minute to think, I'm thinking, God, that would, just wouldn't make sense, because I think stability wise, but it definitely, a beanbag would be stable, especially with the weight of 12 pounds sitting on top of it. Yeah, the, the thing is, I mean, a lot of times the camera it is just, is supported by the beanbag and it's wonderful, but if you do have to pick it up, You're able the, to just the, the it cameras go. have these wonderful, uh, vibration reduction systems in them and this excuse me the lens has, has that in it and the one you pay for that but you get a wonderful one in this shot and it just stops the bird just great yeah that's <laughs> so. incredible well and it's important because obviously when something's in flight so if someone were to put a price on something they think like a basic if you want to just get started don't go crazy but okay. just to get started what do you think would be a good yeah. dollar amount that would probably okay. cost to get them going i i purchased uh my first dslr and the lens cost about three thousand dollars um you could go a little bit less than that um i didn't get the beginning DSLR but just a little a step up and uh, um, but the lens you're going to find costs about sixteen hundred dollars for a, a 100 to 400 zoom lens and that's what most people start with who want to take birds seriously yeah just so people have kind of an idea because yeah. I know you look at a camera you go to a store and you're like oh a couple hundred bucks here and there but I know photography is very expensive yeah it is it's <laughs> it, very expensive so, so and it's also addicting yeah. <laughs> Once you get started <laughs> shooting birds. <laughs> nice. Okay, so you have a second set of photos oh, that yes. you can share with us? You bet. Okay, so um, okay, so this is a wood duck. Everybody loves to take wood ducks. This is, happens to be my favorite shot of all the wood ducks that I've gotten. This is a bald eagle, of course, and I just love the colorful background. He just gave me a lot of good shots. He's beautiful. Like everything on him is perfect. Yeah, just just about. <laughs> and uh, this is a close-up of a great horned owl, a young one that had fledged probably about a month before. He's giving you the look of really you're going to take my yeah. picture right now. It was, he, <laughs> it was amazing to find this guy so close. This was I was only about like 20 feet from him. Uh, this is a close-up of a great blue heron. Um, is that a snake? Yes. He's, wow. He's making a meal out of one of his favorite snacks at Ridgefield. He's not happy. Yeah, um, <laughs> I think this is, he's putting up his a defense here and he's- yeah, Clearly, uh, that's an incredible, look how close you are. That's incredible. Yeah, and well, yeah, I won't go into why I was so close. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll talk too long if I do. So another bald eagle that was standing in this lake and he stood there for the longest time and. I just couldn't figure out what he was doing, but every once in a while he'd take a drink of water, and I think what he was doing was try to digest the meal or something he had had. Okay, so he's sitting there, yeah. standing there and trying to... Yeah. So, now usually when I take a picture, I always want to get a bird's shot, a bird's eye, excuse me, a, a sharp bird eye. Uh, once in a while a picture is compelling enough where you can not show their eyes and so this is a great blue heron. It looks like he's wearing a shawl. I mean look yeah. at the feathers and, on his and, back and, and the, the fact that the feet were so sharp um, kind of puts this picture all That's together. A, yeah I like that. That's great. Uh oh. I think we, we are. Miss one? Yeah we're, we missed several. Oh. <laughs> it, I think we're gonna have to stop there. Is this your last one then? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The so other, the others are just not showing up. Okay, so you can tell us about this one. Okay, so this was the one that was on from the beginning of the show. And and this is another uh, female northern harrier. The colors in that is just like that bird is striking, just everything about it. She doesn't look very happy, I'm not gonna lie, she looks kinda mad. Well, she she really isn't. That's she's looking she's hunting right now. She, northern harriers fly low over the uh, grass. And that's what she's doing, and and they use this cape around their neck as a uh, like an owl uses their face to hear, and so they listen for something in the grass as well as watch for it. Oh, so they've so, got all their senses are yeah, taken in right there. Yeah. So since a few of your photos didn't show up, you can go back and tell me why you were so close to the bird with the snake in his mouth. Okay, so so I was 
every once in a while, I force myself to put a different uh, teleconverter on here. So I had a doubler. So I'd actually made my lens 800 millimeters. And, but, and then I ran into this heron that looked intense and looked like it was really, might show me some action. Because usually I just go by the herons. And so I sat there, stopped my car, aimed at it, and it uh, picked up a snake almost immediately. And then I've got lots of pictures of it doing all kinds of things with this snake. And uh, I actually won a, a uh, contest with that picture. I, I bet. That's so, just um, incredible that you that caught it in that. And it got me a lot of national attention also, actually, that picture. So Nice. So that's an important photo. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, okay, so how do you feel like you get the best results? Is You just feel like luck is just your best result? <laughs> I, mean, I almost hate no. to say that, but yeah. you, do you feel like there's a technique or something yeah. that, you, that you do? Or Yeah. The, for my experience, the most important thing and then what I concentrate on any time I take a shot is to have sh the sharpest picture I can get. And so there's three main things I do to try to get a sharp picture. Uh, the first one is always take advantage of when you are close to a subject. Um, if the closer you are to any picture, the better it's going to be. It takes care of a lot of other problems that might arise. Um, the second thing is your technique in holding, supporting, and shooting the camera. Um, when you use long lenses, it, any little movement from either inside the camera or from an external source is multiplied by your long lens. So you have to learn to really hold everything still and to try to dampen the vibrations that are even caused by the shutter. So, um, so that's the second thing. And, and by the way, you, it just takes a lot of practice to do that well. And then the third thing is a fast shutter speed. So we want a fast shutter speed to stop the action. And therefore, <coughs> we're going to have a sharper, shutter, a sharper shot the faster the shutter speed is. Okay, so when you've got the camera, there's so many adjustments you have to make. The shutter speed, I mean, there's different things. You, you can't just yeah. get up there and shoot the camera. I mean, as much as I'd like to say you can, but there's so many adjustments that you make to get a perfect picture. Yeah, so the thing is, I have my um, camera set the way I like it for birds, and so for flying birds. So there's not too many things, actually, that you have to adjust, but the way I have it set up is, first of all, we want it on, uh, um, oh my goodness, the word is forgetting me. Um, I'm sorry, I made a list just in case. Um, okay, okay, we want burst mode. Burst okay. mode. We want to take as many pictures as we can when we get the opportunity. A small amount of time, so right. just shoot, 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 shoot. Got and it. then we want a raw image. So, in other words, we don't want to take JPEG pictures. We want raw images. So, when we get to post processing, we have lots of data to improve our picture. And then we always want a wide open aperture. So, this does two things for us it, uh, it gives us a shallow depth of field, so our background is blurry. We don't want distracting things. So, you can focus more on the subject. Right. And and also, uh, it gets, gives us more light. The wider aperture gives us more light so we can have a faster shutter speed. Okay. So the other thing I like to do is set my camera on manual exposure. If, if you have it on automatic exposure, it's just not going to read a, a bird right. It's too small of a subject. So let's say there's a bird flying across the, the sky and you have it on automatic exposure, even if you have it on a spot meter, it's going to read the bright sky more than the bird. So you're going to have an underexposed bird. So I try to do it manually and I try to set, before I run into the bird, I try to set the exposure up. So when you take your picture, everything's already there. You're not messing with it while you're taking right. your photos. And, and the, the computer and the camera doesn't have to waste time calculating Thinking exposure too, really. So speed is also an issue. So when you 
to go out and take do you do it usually by yourself or do you take anybody with you or mm -hmm. obviously your brother likes to take photos because that's um, the reason why i've you... never gone with my brother oh <laughs> um, even that's though crazy. he taught me how to do this he did it by uh telling me what pictures were good and what was wrong with them and so it was and he was really good at that too so um no, so, I'm sorry, would you please remind me of that question again? Just, well, I said, did you ever take anybody with you? Oh, okay, yeah, You no, said your brother, I he don't was the go. one that brought it's you a, into that? It's basically a one-person sport. Because um, okay. you want to be able to take pictures out of both sides of your car. So and, you don't want anybody in your way. That's right, so to do that, <laughs> it's an evolving process, and you just learn. Like, it took me a lot, quite a while to learn that a beanbag was the best thing. I went through all kinds of other trials different things and to figure it out. figured out that they didn't work so um, now I'm happy to take anybody around Ridgefield for instance and show them the ropes and what I do and so I do that quite a lot for people but um, That's they get to take pictures out of the right and I take pictures out of the, out left. Of the left right? <laughs> and then if you see one of the other side you're like I get that shot you need to back up because I was here first yeah and, <laughs> and sometimes we do that sometimes we turn the car around or whatever so nice so when you go out do you go out for the day like say hey I'm gonna go take photos today I'm, this is gonna be like an all-day thing or is it something you feel like I mean I know you said it like dusk and dawn and different times I mean but when you yeah. step out obviously you're retired so if you've got more time than most of us there you go that's part of it so that makes a huge difference yeah so I usually go either like probably between four to six hours at a time and uh, you know you start to get hungry after that so um, <laughs> gotta pack a lunch yeah and so either I might either start really early in the morning and go to around noon or else I might start at two o'clock and go till like just before sunset so and have you met a lot of photographers along the way oh yeah so is it you think it's a really popular sport or well or it getting, is for us it more? it's expensive so crazy I think that people. kind of makes it a little <laughs> oh, more challenging yeah a retired person you know you've been saving money all your life so you might have uh, a slush fund yeah there you go and so so I find a lot of the people out there are retired. Not everyone, but uh, I, uh, but I have met a lot of people. Yeah, and then they've been very helpful too. And so. do you feel like the action more, like the birds versus an like an, like a fox or something that's more you know not as active is more exciting for you? Or does it just is it just a good shot is a good shot? Yeah, that's that's it for me. I'm I'm happy to see anything, and I just hope. That I can get a good shot of it, you know, and when I do, I am very satisfied. So that's the most important thing to me. So I'm not like the birders, like in your last show, who are looking Focus for rare on birds. One, right. I I just am trying to get a good shot, and I don't care what it is, oh, as long as it's as long as it's um, nature and wildlife yeah, and, and interesting. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. And do you have plans to like? Go outside of the Northwest, or do you like? There's a lot here. I mean, I get that. Yeah. No, I think we're really lucky here. I've gone to wildlife refuges in Utah, that are way larger than uh, Ridgefield is, but the birds are so far away. You just don't have as many opportunities. Uh, so you feel Ridgefield this is a is good a, place, good location. Is a jewel of a place. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming and being with us. This is awesome. Thanks for this nature here, Trees Both. We will talk to you next time. That came really fast. Wow, it sure did. Good job. Good job. Beautiful. Man. <laughs> I told you. That was cool. <laughs> it's no problem. Once you get going, it's <laughs> it, like it just it kind of flows. And I usually can